Hi everybody, I'm Brittany Lewis, a breaking news reporter here at Forbes. Joining me now is Redfin's chief economist, Daryl Fairweather. We're living in a time where many Americans are under pressure, whether it be rent or to buy a home, and the average renter is rent stressed. But you wrote for Forbes that Detroit may have a solution to the rent problem in the United States. But before we get to the solution, I do want to talk about the problem. So set the scene for us. What's the rental market in Detroit like? So for many decades, Detroit has been losing population, particularly among people who buy homes. And that has left behind a lot of renters who are competing for the same rental units. At the same time, there hasn't been much development in Detroit, not many new housing units or rental units going up. So that leaves renters with not many options. And then landlords can basically charge whatever they want, even if it means that renters are paying more than 30% of their income in rent. So it's really created a rental affordability problem which is kind of ironic given that buying a home is still so cheap in Detroit. I do want to talk about this because buying a home is one of the import most important decisions people make in their lives because it's one of the most expensive decisions people make in their lives. So when you're looking at buying a house as of right now, is a good investment buying a house in Detroit? With mortgage rates being so high, and also on top of that, Detroit has some of the highest property taxes in the whole country, it's understandable that home buyers aren't seeing that as a good investment. Also, historically, Detroit's home appreciation has not kept up with the rest of the country. So from that perspective, it's not the best investment. That could be changed, though, with a change of taxes, which I know we'll get to later. Let's get to that now, because this is a problem that even the mayor of Detroit realized, and he... Um has a plan to fix it with land value tax. What is that plan? So the way that traditional property taxes work is that you are taxed based on the value of your home and the land that sits underneath it. What this does is that it creates a disincentive for anyone who wants to make improvements. Like if I wanted to put in a backyard dwelling unit at my home, I would have to pay much higher property taxes for that privilege. So I'm not going to go through with it because I know I'll be paying higher property taxes. And in a place like Detroit, where an increase in value is not guaranteed, it makes it a really risky investment to put any work into your home. That's part of why we see so many vacant and abandoned homes in Detroit. You can change that by shifting to a land value tax, and that puts the tax only on the value of the land. You can do whatever you want in terms of improvements, and your tax won't change as long as the land value doesn't change. Now, if overall Detroit becomes a more attractive place to live and land values go up, that means more revenue for the city of Detroit. But it actually doesn't mean that people aren't going to be willing to invest in Detroit. As long as they know that they're not going to be punished for development, then they're still going to want to invest in Detroit. So do you think this will make Detroit a better investment for people? Yes, I do. I, I think that shifting to this kind of tax structure is a good idea not only for Detroit, but for many cities that want to have sustainable economic growth. Other taxes like property taxes or even sales tax and income tax, it discourages people from participating in the economy. If you know your income taxes are going to be high, you're not going to work as much. If you know that you're going to be paying a lot in sales tax, you're not going to be able to afford to buy as much. So shifting to a land value tax is really more efficient because there's always the same amount of land no matter what. Let's talk about how this helps renters, because you said there is a discrepancy between home ownership in Detroit as well as the entire United States. And I want to read some numbers for you. You wrote for Forbes that the home, home ownership rate in Detroit is only 51 percent. The national home ownership rate is 66 percent. Do you think this will see a bump for Detroit's home ownership rate? I think what we're going to see is more development in Detroit, and that's going to mean more housing units that people may have an avenue for affording. Also, if the city is able to use some of this land value tax revenue to support economic development more broadly and also support some of the lower income citizens, they'll be able to save and be able to afford a home quicker. It's not a magic pill for strengthening home ownership. I do think that People are going to see homeownership as more of a long-term investment in Detroit with this kind of tax structure, but it is going to take some time. But I think it puts Detroit on a path where they're going to be able to have a lot of prosperity and look more like some of the other cities that have had a lot of economic prosperity. I know you're saying this isn't a magic pill and you're saying this is a long <sighs> path, but do you have any indication of how long this path is? When can renters, do you think, feel some sort of sense of relief, let's say this got passed tomorrow, how long would that take, do you think? 
In the short term, I think renters will see right away that their landlords are putting more investment into their properties. They're going to be more willing to fix things around their apartments and also make long-term investments that make those apartments really more nice to live in. Down the road, say five years, we're going to see more development, more rental units actually coming up, which gives renters more choice and puts downward pressure on rent prices. Also down the road, we're going to see more tax revenue coming towards the city of Detroit, and hopefully they will use that to reinvest in communities and make renters' lives better overall. I do want to take a step back here and maybe get a bird's eye view of the housing market in the United States right now. A few months ago, I talked to FHA Commissioner Julia Gordon. I talked to HUD Secretary Marsha Fudge, and they both said making housing more affordable, more attainable is their ultimate goal, should be a top priority. And growing up, you think, you know, owning a house with a white picket fence, that's the American dream. So how do you see this becoming a top priority if you see it that way at all? I think many Americans are looking at how much housing has gone up in terms of an expense and they just want relief for themselves. So I think for the first time, this is really becoming a political issue that's not just for people in San Francisco or LA, but people all across the country are feeling the burden of high costs of housing. The average renter pays more than 30% of their income in rent, which is not what most personal finance experts recommend. Your housing budget should be small so you can put money towards other things like sending your kids to college or saving or just spending money on you know foods and services so i think it's becoming much more politically viable but we have a long road ahead because during the 2010s we built fewer homes in this country than any decade going all the way back to the 1960s it's going to take many years of sustained housing development to make sure that there are enough homes for everybody who wants to buy one that's an interesting point and the inventory is a huge problem or the lack of inventory, I should say. And FHA Commissioner Julia Gordon said she wanted to incentivize home builders. Do you see that actually being implemented? I think it's already starting to happen. There are things that you can do that actually don't cost any money, like getting rid of single family zoning or changing the tax structure to be more pro-development as opposed to encouraging people to keep vacant plots of land. We've seen changes in California that have increased the amount of dense housing that could be built. It's nice to see Detroit ready to try something new in terms of taxes. Maybe that will spread. So I think across the board, uh, politicians are getting more experimental. Montana is a really great example. They they passed a host of laws that are going to make it much easier to develop. And that's great for them because they're getting ahead of the problem as opposed to places like California that are really fighting a fight that's 10 years old now. As a renter myself, you said a number that, you know, I my eyes popped a little bit when you said Americans are paying over 30% of their income on rent. I know that to be true. Moody's Analytics said in a report last month that 30% is really the new normal is how they described it. So do you see this changing anytime soon? Because to me, that doesn't really sound sustainable. Many people don't find it sustainable either, and they're leaving places with really high cost of housing for places with lower cost of housing, especially during the pandemic, people were leaving the coast and going inland or to the south, where it's a lot easier to build housing, and as a result, home prices aren't as high. Now, this is actually shifting part of the problem to the center of the country, because now those places are grappling with their own affordability crises. But I think many families just don't find it sustainable and are willing to move thousands of miles to find a way where they can actually have some money left over after paying for housing. Detroit is finding a solution for reducing rent, but overall, I mean, the housing market has really been under stress, whether it be buying a house or renting. How are you feeling? Are you feeling optimistic, pessimistic, hopeful? What's your reaction? I. I'm feeling more optimistic now than I was a couple of years ago, because at least people are talking about this issue and laws are being passed. It's still going to take many years to turn the ship on this one because housing does take time. But it seems like finally this this is getting some attention. Daryl Fairweather, thank you for joining me. Thank you.